before <laughs> yeah and, and we're not even halfway there yet I think it's like 11 or 14 miles 14 miles track. of this flat flat salt area yeah yeah oh my god okay so right now we are heading out in the salt flats tonight's Milky Way number two is in the Bonneville salt flats and it's dry right now and so we are driving just on top of it and I don't know where we're going really just following tracks oh you just got off the tracks Oh, I'm nervous. Like, any second is going to be but muddy. There's, but there's nothing around. It's just empty. Where do yeah. you think we should go for our Milky Way shot? Because it's just going to be a panorama, Milky Way going up and over the big flat area. I was hoping for some shapes. I was hoping for some maybe water, but I got nothing. Yeah, it's just, I mean, I don't know. Until we get out there and actually look, there might be like some salt crystal shapes and stuff. But it's almost like macro type stuff. So I'm not sure how it's going to show up. With the Milky Way over it, it'll be a challenge for sure because it's just totally flat out here. Let's get out and try looking at the area and see if we like anything or hate anything. Okay. All right. Oh, it's wet. Oh, so salty. So crazy. Look at that crystal. Crystal goodness falling down. And this is all super hard, but this stuff we went over earlier is wet. This is a lot harder than I thought it was when I was driving over it. It's like if you smear it, it's like a little bit moist, but it's like, I mean, it's like rock hard, man. <laughs> <laughs> Normally there's totally like, it's like a thin crust and like mud underneath it, right? Yeah, look, we've Whereas come out is, here. This is damp still, it's still wet, but it's solid, man. I mean, this is just a solid piece of crystal we have been out here before we're in, early in the season it's more kind of a mud it's like a, a crust on top of mud well I think it's I think it's a different area so over there more it has yeah that. whereas this is just just I don't even know how deep this goes but it's just a solid <laughs> piece of salt <sighs> so now we got to decide where do we go where do we shoot our Milky Way I mean we could come all the way out there or we could continue out and it's weird because you see the light in the horizon and you look over it's dark but it also seems hazy hazy tonight and possibly possibly no good but up there yeah you can make out jupiter really really it's bright so blue. it's so like this interesting light blue yeah i'm hoping that that milky way will come through we'll see how it goes the great milky way chase continues there's no clouds in the sky but a weird haze on the horizon okay so as we progress through the night, the Milky Way, that's blue hour, then it's out in astronomical at about 11.15, and the core will be in a good position. What's it look like for arching pano? Like move it over, move your, move Maybe. over to the left. See where the whole arch goes. Oh, it goes up and around, and it comes all the way to the where the sun's setting practically. So we're gonna deal with an arch that goes and touches those rocks right there on yeah. the left? Yeah. So the arch will terminate there, Right in and the middle then of those go two. out to It'll here. Go up and around this way. And then come all the way down. The core's gonna be barely risen. That's like 1130. Because as we can see, the moon's following. The moon's following the Milky Way. So the moon's gonna rise right around 1230. It looks kind of damp, Ooh. but not really. But we're also getting some shapes. Yeah, true. We are. If you look at the... Wow. We're getting okay. texture. Well, sort okay, of. I'm not seeing any of that. I mean, look at that. So Brendan's way out there right now. He's got shoes that don't have holes in them. As proud of my slippers as people have called them, Jeff has called them slippers. Um, I I really like my shoes, and they're comfortable shoes to drive in and comfortable shoes to scout in. So still wearing them, and Brendan's the only one who has shoes out there that can go in the water. 
So he's checking out what's over there and he says there's some geometric shapes or some cool stuff and so maybe we'll be standing in water tonight for the Milky Way. Hey, so we're out in the salt flats now tonight. We found that puddle of water that we were looking for earlier. Yeah, that's nice. We're starting at the edge. We're gonna go a little further deeper in, right? And see if we can get a little bit cleaner water. Yeah, we're trying it here so that we have that berm lower in our frame. And then that divider that it basically becomes, the divider between the real Milky Way and the reflected Milky Way. Yeah. And here it has this, this, this place, but if we go closer, that's gonna be higher in our frame or mm -hmm. lower depending on how we shoot the angle. So yeah. we're just gonna try both. We have plenty of time. Yeah, yeah. I think there's less, uh, right here, there's crystals are popping up, a lot of crystals popping up out of the water. And then further in, there's it's more just water. So you're saying smooth, the salt surface. crystal dirt is coming up out of the water yeah. and making ripples and bumps. Not ripples, but bumps, yeah. No movement ripples, but yeah. just uh, yeah. lumps in the water yeah. instead of a glassy surface. Right, right. Okay, okay, cool. I get why we want to go in closer for that. Yeah, so we're not getting like the best reflection. We're still getting a decent reflection, but, but we can definitely decent. get better if we go maybe 100 yards out that way. So. Okay, cool. Let's try it out. So we're going to walk out a little further and see. Uh, right now you can see the bumps. They're rising above the water. The water is very, very thin here. It's very shallow. So we've got a little bit, what's a little bit deeper, even just an inch, not even an inch, half an inch more. And then it covers the salt bumps and we can get that nice glassy, perfect reflection. Let's do it. It gets really flat. Look, the bumps go away. I think this is a good spot, maybe. Yeah, yeah. You're yeah. definitely in deeper water. Yeah. See how the bumps go away and it's totally flat? It's so crazy. So now we're in position. This right here, we've got the camera set up with the Nef. Milky Way has risen, Astro Twilight has ended, so it's full darkness. And this camera, the 5D Mark IV, is sitting here with a Rokinon lens. It's got the uh, 1.4 Rokinon 24 millimeter. It's fantastic, even though I always stop it down to two. If I use it at 1.4, I have a little bit of coma, a little bit of stretching, especially in the corners. But if I bring it down to two, all that gets knocked off. If you were doing your focus and use that Carson Lumi Loop and you're watching that ball right there that big orb you go from this to this just by changing it from f1.4 to f2 so it's a huge change but now I'm looking at the histogram and checking out do I want 8 seconds with 8,000 ISO 8 seconds shutter with 10,000 ISO or 8 seconds with 12,800 ISO so check out the histogram to show you guys what you want to look for even though this is a skew look at the picture you can see how it's turning out pretty well and this is with eight seconds at 8,000 ISO. And that histogram, that's showing a little underexposed. Check out this graphic. This is what you typically want, but we don't have that initial black hump and the lower dark midtone or lower dark tones because look at the image. We have a reflected Milky Way with barely a stripe, barely a stripe of black right there. So just barely any black to talk about. So this one being a little underexposed, it's not touching the middle very much. I went up one more. And let's see, I tried it at, no coordinates. I tried it at, boop, here's at 10,000 ISO. You can see it's touching the middle. It has a nice solid hump. That's a, probably a perfect exposure for it. But let me try the 12,800. And yeah, you can see I lose a lot of the dark and it's stretching over the middle a little bit too much. This is not bad. I mean, I certainly wouldn't be regretting this exposure, but I have plenty of exposure at the 10,000 level, so I think my shot is gonna be 10,000. Now that I know that I wanna get 10,000 and I check the histogram, and just a note, you wanna shoot the core when you're doing the histogram check like this. You wanna see how the darks and the dark parts of the sky and the bright, lighter mid-tones and white spots of the Milky Way core shoot and how they turn out on this luminosity histogram. If it turns out that you're getting more exposure to the right, towards the center as much as you can without going too far, then you properly expose the brightest spots of the Milky Way core without overblowing them. So I like the shot, 10,000 ISO with my settings, eight seconds gives me less star trailing. I should probably even be around six or something on this 5D Mark IV if you go by the NPF rule. But uh, let's go with eight seconds. I'm gonna like the star trailing. I'm gonna do my panorama now and get that sweet reflection. Look at that. Look at that. This is showing you quickly how awesome the reflection is out there. Ooh. I don't know what that sound is. 
the ghost. Finished with my panorama. I got all the shots I could. I had to hurry and capture these shots before the moon was rising and before the Milky Way panorama was too high in the sky. But here's a frame of Brendan and I being out there doing our selfies, silhouetted up against the awesome light pollution that normally sucks, but this light pollution is looking fantastic. It's got a cool extra gradient of color that it brought to my image that I'm really liking. So turned out great. Second Milky Way, awesome. You ever play second, the Portal 2? Hmm, talking to the wrong person. Yeah, sorry, wrong so, generation. <laughs> wrong generation, it happened only five years ago. Hey guys, so this has turned out really fantastic. We have got a full panorama on my shot. What'd you get? I just did a, la a, a landscape at about 15 millimeters wide, like so wide as my lens goes, and just got reflection and the Milky Way. So with it being a landscape shot and we have a reflection, how, what's your composition like? Um, originally, I was having the horizon cut down the middle of the image, but then I don't really like those images too much, so I raised it up a little bit. Got a little bit more sky and put the put the horizon at the lower third. Kind of okay, right on the third. Yeah, I tried to get close to the third, so awesome. you know, so roughly around there, and it looks it looks a little better, I think. So my going for the full panorama required me to turn all the way far to my right, all the way far to my left. But then it opened up the opportunity of putting us out there in a selfie during that big yellow light bloom. And man, the gradient from the sky down to the yellow light pollution to the reflection of the yellow light pollution. Because they're complementary colors too, it looks uh, amazing. It's really, really cool. I mean, that color scheme is pretty much Photog Adventures yellow and blue. Right. But it's got like a pastel or teal or something. Yeah, like a washed out version. Kind of yeah. Thing. Oh, it's turning out so fantastic. Milky Way number two has turned out fantastic. This is Bonneville Salt Flats signing off the great Milky Way chase. You guys get out there and do it. Woo. And if you guys ever need a podcast, you listen to Milky Way photography or want to listen about landscape photography, check out the Photog Adventures podcast because we are out there every week putting up a story about, okay, we went here and here. This is what went well. This is what went terribly wrong. We have misadventures and great Sometimes, adventures. Some big time misadventures. <laughs> he still has a car sitting there for the last year that we damaged the engine of. So yeah, yeah. so check out the Photog Adventures podcast if you like. If you like stories and photography stories that are going to inspire you to get out there and have an adventure of your own, then you found the right place. Come yeah. listen to us. Come join us. Every week. Day three. Just like last night, I'm using this Rokinon lens. I think I'm gonna use the Rokinon lens every video. This is my Canon 5D Mark IV. At the trestle, there's a couple shots.